you guys are there, we'll go ahead and read it. Psalm 140 is a psalm of David. In verse number 1 it says, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart continually. Are they gathered together for war? They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Selah. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have purposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hid a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me. Selah. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, Thou hast covered my head in the day of the battle. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked, further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. Selah. As for the head of those that compass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for bringing us all together tonight. I pray that you be with each and every one of us and open up our minds and hearts to take in your word. Let it sink in to our hearts and into our minds. And I pray that you be with me and fill me with your spirit to preach your word with truth and boldness. Uh, that I may glorify you and edify your people. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Like I said, the title of this is To the Chief Musician, A Psalm of David. If you would, go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. While you're going in there, I'm going to read John 1.1. 1, 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. You know, that's one of my favorite verses in the Bible, and it's all true. God made everything by His Word. By His Word. And everything is kept by His Word. According to 2 Peter chapter 3, it says, in verse number 7, But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store. That means we keep on going because God says so. You know, if God was to say quit right now, we'd all be goners. The world would just cease to exist. But it's kept by His word. It says it's reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Everything is kept by His word. He has given us His Word. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 21, it says, As for me, this is God speaking, He says, This is my covenant with them, saith the Lord, My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. God made everything by His Word. He has given us His Word. And he said it will last forever. You know, his word is preserved just as much as it is inspired. Why would you inspire your word and then not preserve it? That wouldn't make sense. But that's what people say. You know, they say unless you have the originals that were written down by the apostles, you don't have the word of God. But we have the preserved word of God right here. Why inspire your word and not preserve it? That, that just makes no sense. We have his word. By that same word, he will destroy everything that is ungodly. Like we read in 2 Peter chapter 3. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8 it says, And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. He's just going to say, end. And he's going to end. It says, And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. In Revelation chapter 19 verse 15 it says, 
and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations, and shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of the Almighty God. He's going to destroy everything that's ungodly just with the word of his mouth. Everything is by the word of God. Everything. In Revelation chapter 19 verse 21 it says, And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. You know that sword that's coming out of his mouth is his word. His word, when he says, when he says stop, it stops. When he says go, it goes. Everything was created by his word. We're kept by his word. He's given his word. Everything's going to end by his word. And the word has power. The word of God has power. You know, I hate to beat a dead horse, but those, those new perversions, they don't have no power. They got the power to put you to sleep. That's about it. But in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29, it says, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? I'm giving you all these verses because we know the word of God is truth. It's truth. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word is truth. Everything that we have today from God is all truth. Truth gives life. Jesus is the truth. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Just like we read in John 1, 1. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21, it says, If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. Back up there in John chapter 1, it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Truth brings forth life. Lies bring death and destruction. And Satan is an imitator of God in almost every way imaginable. Everything that God does, Satan tries to imitate it. Everything is brought to life by God's word. Everything's going to end by God's word. Satan tries to imitate God by having his word, only his word is lies and deceit. Lies bring forth death and destruction. When Satan is an imitator of God, the only way he can imitate the truth of God is with lies and deceit. Lies and deceit. In John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He's all lies. There's no truth in Satan, and there's no lies in Jesus. Because Jesus is all truth. But Satan is all lies. If you're there in Genesis chapter 1. Let me catch up to you. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. It says. And God blessed them. Talking about Adam and Eve. And God said unto them. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. You know, God gave us dominion over all the animals, all the beasts, over the whole earth. He gave us dominion over that. To rule over that. To do as we see fit. You know, He gave that to us. The Bible says that the world was inhabited. Uh, the world was created to be inhabited. To be used by us. It was created for us. That's why we was created on the sixth day and everything else was created, uh, you know, days one through five. So it could be ready for us. Not for the animals, but for us. It was created for us to use. If you would look over at Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now look down at verse number 4, it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, 
She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. God gave us dominion over all the beasts of the field, but right there we just gave it away. Right there we just gave it back to the animals, to the beast. Now he has dominion from his subtlety. They gave up their dominion over the beast, and verse number four was just an outright lie. He said, uh, you will not surely die. God said the day you eat of that, you will die. You know, that's God's word. It is truth. The Dayton is, uh, the devil, uh, Satan is all lies. If we go back to Psalm 140. But isn't that what we see today in the world? You know, they say it's okay to kill your children in the womb. Or right when they come out of the womb. You know, but if you go mess with a, a bald eagle's nest and mess with one of those eggs, you'll go straight to prison. Who has dominion? The animals or the people? You know, if you go catch a fish to feed your family that's not the right size or is protected, you'll be in big trouble. They'll give you big fines, take all your fishing equipment, uh, maybe take you to jail, take your license away. Who has dominion? The fish or the people? People are starving in a lot of places in the world, but we have to protect the wildlife habitat. You know, instead of growing food, you know, to feed people, you know, for our use, for us to have dominion over, who has dominion? You know, the animals or the people? Or digging for oil. You know, why did oil get so expensive these last couple of years? It's because Biden shut down the pipeline because he didn't want to chase out all the moose out of Canada uh, and, and out of the north, northern part of the United States. You know, that was their, uh, the lies that they were telling. He just wanted to bankrupt us, but that was the lies he was telling. You know, save the habitat for the animals. Uh, we got to protect them. You know, heck with all you people that are paying, you know, $4 a gallon for gas. The only reason why it's cheap now is because an election's coming up, by the way. People in India are worshiping cows. You know, when I looked that up, it's not only in India, it's in Egypt still, and a lot of different places in the world. They're worshiping different kinds of animals. Who has the dominion now? We're supposed to have dominion over all these animals, but they have dominion over us. You know, you go out there and, and, and kill a whale, and they'll put you in prison for the rest of your life. Save the whales, save the eagles, save the owls. You know, if you mess with one of those, you'll be in big trouble. But you can, you can kill your baby in the womb. We don't care about that. You know, we care about the animals. Animals are number one. Seems like animals are more valuable than people these days. At least people care more about the animals than they do the people. Who has dominion now? It's all because of the serpent and his lies. Deceiving. Deceiving. In Psalm 140, verse 3, it says, they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. See la. Words are more dangerous than weapons. Words are more dangerous than weapons. You know, you've heard that saying, the pen is mightier than the sword. No, the tongue is mightier than the sword. If you would, go to 1 Kings chapter 21. You know, if you do bad things in this world, like violence and anarchy, you'll be punished. But if you can convince the people that their cause is right, the people just let it happen. We've seen perfect evidence of that when they had those riots back when COVID hit, when the people were taking over cities, uh, rioting, busting out windows, taking whatever they want. Oh, they're just expressing their anger. They're just expressing their anger. You know, judges wouldn't arrest them, uh, wouldn't prosecute them. The police wouldn't arrest them. Uh, you know... It was just crazy. You know, they took over Seattle, Washington, completely took over that city. I think it was Seattle, one of those cities. You know, but it, it was wicked. It deserved it anyways. You know, but it was just anarchy. But if you convince the people that their cause is right, they just let them do it. They just let them do it. Black Lives Matter. You know, if you convince people that their cause is right, they can get away with anything. You know, that's just a money scheme. I heard that the, the, the founder of Black Lives Matter lives in a, a $6 million mansion somewhere and has a, a summer home that's worth $3 million or something like that. It's all about money. You know, if, if you keep their cause going, you'll just keep feeding the piggy bank. You'll just keep feeding the piggy bank. It doesn't matter what they do. If you can convince people with the lies that you spew out that their cause is right, you can get away with anything. 
People say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. They never hurt a Naboth. If you're there in 1 Kings chapter 21, in verse number 1 it says, And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard, which was, in, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I might have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it, or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbidded me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. But Jezebel his wife came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou not govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people and set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And then the men of his city, even the elders of the nobles, who were the inhabitants of his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them, they proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and said before him, And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. And it came to pass, when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. See, you can go do wickedness, and people will fight against you. But if you convince them that what they're doing is right, they'll do all the wickedness in the world because you convince them with lies and deceit. That's how Satan works. That's how this world works. You know, people can convince, you know, all these ungodly people with the lies, you know, promising them this and telling them that they're okay to do whatever they want just to create anarchy and destruction. You know, and there's a reason for all that. You know, it's all from Satan. The wicked word is the title of my message today. The wicked word. And the reason why I, I titled it that, it was because we have the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word is good. And we're kept alive by God's word. But Satan's word is the wicked word. It's all the lies in the world. All the lies in the world that we have to deal with each and every day. The lies from Satan and the lies from the rest of this world. It's the wicked word. You know, the wicked word, he's trying to imitate God only in his own way. He can't tell the truth because he's the father of lies. All he can tell is lies. But he can be convincing lies. He convinced Eve. You know, that put us all in this, you know, fallen state. We're all going to die one day, you know, because he was able to convince Eve... Uh, to go against God, you know, by his lies and his subtlety. If we would go back to Psalm 140. The world we live in today is run by politicians. Who ever met an honest politician? I can't think of one. I can't think of one. They all say one thing and do something else. 
Read my lips, no new taxes. You believe that? You remember that? That was the first Bush. Read my lips, no, two ta no new taxes. As soon as he got into office, he raised taxes. With new taxes. We didn't kill those people. You remember the Clintons? They was just full of lies. You know, and how many people ended up dead that went against the Clintons? You know, they didn't say that, but I just threw that in there because I thought it was funny. You know, I believe they killed a lot of people because they're totally wicked. And anybody goes up against them, you know, they'll slay. We'll find their weapons of mass destruction. You know, that was the second Bush when he was running for uh, election and re-election. You know, he was going to go over there and go to war with those people saying that they had some weapons of mass destruction just so he could go steal their oil. That was all a big lie. There never was any weapons of mass destruction. It was just lies, but he got what he wanted. He got rich, and all his buddies got rich. <coughs> right, right. And then the next one, you know, he got up there and said, you know, we're going to give you free health care. If you like your doctor, you can keep your health care. Uh, you can keep your doctor. Well, nobody ever got free health care. All they did was take it out of their taxes. I don't know if you know, but all these people getting this taxes back at the end of the year, if they didn't pay for their insurance for the whole year, they took it out of their taxes. It's just a money racket. And then nobody was ever able to keep their doctor uh, that wanted to keep their doctor that was on that, you know, free insurance. It was all lies, just to get votes. And then Biden, you know, I'll bring back the economy. Back when he first got in and, you know, the economy started tanking, he started uh, uh, praising how uh, that first 4th of July, that, you know, a pack of hot dogs was four, do four cents cheaper than it was the year before. I'll bring back the economy. That's what he was claiming when he was running, the, uh, running for election. Look at our economy now. You know, it's all lies. It's all lies. And, you know, when he goes up for re-election and if he gets into a debate with Trump, he's going to say, look at gas prices now. Look at gas prices now. They're only doing that because there's an election coming up. You know, that's the only reason. It's all lies. You know, we can't believe anything that they say. Politicians are the biggest liars out there. And they're also the smoothest talkers. The smoothest talkers. You know, while they're destroying our world, they fail to realize that they're destroying their own world too. They're destroying their own world too and they don't even care. What about their families, their kids? You know, they're talking about making the world a better place. All they're doing is making it worse. All they're doing is making it worse. Every time we get a new politician in office, the world gets a little bit worse. It gets a little bit worse every single time. Never gets better. It never gets better. You know, they promise the minorities, you know, extra rights and, and special freedoms and more money just to get a vote. Has anything ever gotten better or changed? No. Even when Obama got in, oh, we got a black president. Things are going to be great for the black people. Did it ever get any better? It actually got better when Trump was in office, according to the statistics. You know, nothing's ever really gotten better. You know, now it's worse than it ever was before. They don't even care about their own families. All they care about is themselves and the power that they get for being in office. That's all they care about. Power and money. They don't care about their own families, their descendants. You know, the Bible says a wise man, you know, layeth up an inheritance for his children's children. They're taking it away. What is our inheritance? Everybody in here is probably, you know, uh, uh, what is it, $80,000 in debt or $100,000 in debt, $300,000 in debt that we're going to have to pay, you know, as our taxes just keep climbing and climbing. That's the inheritance that they left us. They're a bunch of liars. If you're there in Psalm 140, in verse number 8, it says, Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves, Selah. As for the head of those that can pass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. What he's praying for here is that, you know, what these people do that leave an inheritance, you know, to their to the next generation, let that fall upon their head. Let it hunt his soul for the rest of his life. 
You know, let whatever he wants turn around on his own head. They don't care about their, their grandchildren or their great-grandchildren, you know, the problems that they're leaving them. All they cared about is their own power. But it says, let that turn upon them. Let it come back upon them. Their children will reap what they have sown. It will hunt them. They're children's children. It's going to hunt them. Whatever the wickedness that these politicians have sown and all the liars in the world have sown, it's going to come back to hunt the next generation. You know, the two beasts, the Antichrist is going to be a politician. And the two beasts that we read about in Revelation, they're going to be politicians. They're going to be smooth talkers. That's what the Bible says. If you would go to Revelation chapter 13. While you're going in there, I'll read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Lying wonders. You know, he's going to be up there lying out of his mouth. And it's going to be wonders because people are going to believe it. And it says, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. People don't want the truth. They want to hear those lies. That's why, that's why it still goes on. That's why people don't stand up and go against these, you know, all these liars in uh, uh, the government. Because they, they love not the truth. If you're there in Revelation chapter 13, this is the New World Order chapter. It says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads... The name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and his great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear to hear... Let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. You notice this is all saying how, they, how they're speaking. It says, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth... And them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had a wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak... And caused as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might bite or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. You know, they're all going to be a bunch of politicians. A bunch of politicians lying, speaking, deceiving the people, deceiving everybody. Even the bad people are going to be deceived. <coughs> David is praying here that God keeps him safe from all the liars in the world. All the liars in the world that he's going to face, especially from Satan. David is praying here in this psalm. You know, keep me, O Lord. In verse number 1 it says, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. 
It's all the liars in the world. The wicked word. You know, that's what we have. We either have the word of God or we got a bunch of lies and it's all wicked. David was righteous. Saul was wicked. Saul the king. The wicked always want to get rid of the righteous. They always want to get rid of the righteous. They just can't come out and do it because we'll get up and fight against them. But if they do it with subtlety and sneak in, you know, in the back door, you know, with their lies and deceitfulness, that's how they do it. That's how they do it. They figured that out. You know, back in the day when, you know, somebody wanted to take something, they just went and killed those people and took it. You know, now it's all deceitfulness. Everything we see on the news and everything, it's all lies. It's all lies. You don't know what to believe. I'm sure there's a little truth mixed into everything, but it's, it's mainly all lies to deceive us and make us think one way or the other. You know, they had us convinced that, oh, the Ukraine is so sad, you know, or, uh, uh, yeah, you, you know, Ukraine is so sad, you know, it was Russia that was trying to protect themselves. We don't know exactly what was going on over there, but I tell you, we was thinking exactly what they wanted us to think. They was, we was thinking exactly what they wanted us to think. You know, it's the same way over there with Israel. Israel's over there saying, we're going to kill all these people no matter what. You know, the USA is pleading with them, pleading with Israel to let their hostages go. And this I did hear, a little bit of the news that I caught. But Israel said, no, we're going to kill every one of these uh, heathen people. You know, they're just, they're just wicked as all get out, but they got us convinced that we should stand with Israel. Why? They're just as wicked as the Palestinians. That's the, the wicked killing the wicked over there. I'm not going to stand with either one of them. I'm going to stand with the Word of God. You know, the rest of the world can, can do whatever it wants to. But they have us thinking whatever they want. I can guarantee you that. The wicked always wants to get rid of the righteous. And that's only because they can stay in power, just like Saul. He wanted to get rid of David just because he wanted to stay in power. He didn't want to lose his, his kingdom. His kingship. They'll always say one thing and do another. You know, when David's writing this, I'm sure he's running from uh, King Saul. Uh, this Bible here, or one of my other Bibles said that, you know, he was writing this about, you know, uh, while he was in the cave and while he was fleeing from Doeg, the Edomite. But, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, he wrote this when he was running from Saul. They'll always say one thing and do another. You remember when David came across Saul's camp and they were all asleep and God put a, a, a heavy sleep on him? That's in 1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 21. It says, Then said Saul, this is after David already uh, took his bolster and his uh, flagon of water or whatever it was. And then he goes across the valley and he yells back to King Saul. And this is, Then said Saul, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will no more do thee harm. Was that the truth? No. It says, Because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day, behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. And David answered and said, Behold, the king's spear, and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. The Lord render to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered thee into my hand today, but I will not stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes, so let my life be much more set in the eyes of the Lord. And let him deliver me out of the, all tribulation. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son David. Thou shalt both do great things, and also shalt thou prevail. So David went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. David went on his way. He wasn't going to fall for that. You know, Saul was said, come on over here, my son, and I'm not going to pursue you no more. He didn't fall for that. And Saul still pursued him. After we read on, you know, through uh, the rest of the book, Saul still pursues him. You know, he goes back and gets a heart at heart again and then gets 3,000 men and goes after and chases him again. And then when David was in the cave, you know, when you couldn't see nothing, it was probably pitch black when Saul was in there relieving himself. That's in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 16, it says, And it came to pass, when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded the evil. And thou hast showed this day how that thou hast dealt well with me. Forasmuch as when the Lord had delivered me into thine hand, thou killedest me not. 
For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day. And now, behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Swear now, therefore, unto me by the Lord that thou wilt not cut off my seed after me, and that thou, thou wilt not destroy my name out of my father's house. And David swear unto Saul. And Saul went home, but David and his men got them up unto the hold. That's a bunch of lies there too. You know, that's all a bunch of lies. You know, David still pursued after David. He still wanted to kill him all the way up until his death. All the way up until his death, he wanted to get rid of David. But it turned around on him, didn't it? He ended up getting killed and his two sons got killed. You know, just like it says here in Psalm, uh, Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. It's exactly what we see here. You know, Saul was full of lies to David saying, you know, you saved my life, come back. I'm not going to pursue any more. You're going to be king. Everything's okay. Now, nah, he would have killed David the second David uh, came into the camp. David didn't fall for it. That's because God preserved him. God preserved him. But Saul and his sons died. His sons reaped what he had sowed. His sons paid the price for what he did. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, it says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, all liars, shall have their partner in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Liars is in that verse for a reason. That's a lot of horrific stuff. I've never been a murderer or a sorcerer or, or uh, you know, really an idolater worshiping other gods. None of that stuff. But he puts in all liars. You know, that's a, that seems like a small thing compared to that other stuff. But it's not small because God hates liars. It says, and all liars will have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You know, he puts liars with the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers. He puts liars in that same category. It's because God hates liars. Liars come from Satan because he's the father of it. We have the word of God, which is the truth. What's the opposite of that? Satan's lies. All the lies we see in the world, that comes from Satan because he's the father of Satan. All the lies in the new perversions trying to get people to uh, be Laodicean Christians, uh, you know, lukewarm and not doing anything for God, that's all from Satan. He's got them right where they want them. All by his subtlety. All by his subtlety. God hates liars. You know, I was thinking as I was writing this out, you know, one day, uh, or, you know, when I got my uh, blood test back from the doctor, and, uh, you know, they said I had TB. And then I go to the TB doctor, and, you know, my insurance paid thousands and thousands of dollars to have new tests all done again. And then when the TB doctor said, you know, they've been giving me false positives for this whole year. Why are they doing that? Why didn't the people that take, took the original blood test test it over again for free? Now, nah. now let's pay this guy to do it. It's just spreading the wealth. Spreading the wealth. How many people right now are, are on false medication because that first, that first place gave them a false positive? And now they're freaked out and quarantined somewhere because they think they have TB and they really don't. Imagine that. All liars. You know what's the love of money is the root of all evil. You know, me going to see that next doctor, that should have all been for free on their t uh, uh, coming out of their pocketbook. You know, they should have rechecked it or double-checked it the first time, especially since they known all year that they've been sending false positives. Not only to, to, to this doctor, he's only one of uh, probably 10,000 doctors in this area. Imagine how many false positives they sent, you know, all throughout the tri-state. It's all about money. How much money was spent because of all their false positives? <laughs> tell you a funny story about, uh, I guess it was about six years, seven years ago, I got a brand new battery for my work van, and then I had to get an oil change. I went and got an oil change, and they told me my battery was bad. I was like, come on, it ain't bad. I was like, it'll be all right, just leave it. And the next, I get my oil change every six months. Six months later, they said, your battery's bad. Six months later, your battery's ba uh, bad. But you know what, this past year, or, or this past time I got my oil change was the first time they ever said, you know, your battery's good. 
your battery's good. I was like, I've been coming here, you know, for the past six, seven years, and you've told me my own battery was bad every single time. He's like, yeah, we had a bad battery uh, diagnostic machine. It was telling everybody's batteries. How many batteries did they sell because they was telling people lies? And this last time I went, they said, your battery's good. Guess what? My battery died uh, a couple of weeks later. And I had to get a new battery. They was lying. Every, even when they said it was good, they was lying. How many batteries did they sell because uh, their machine was saying that? And it doesn't do that for six years straight uh, on accident. How many batteries did they sell? How much money did they make for telling people lies? God hates liars. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with the fire and brimstone, which is a second death. It's the lies of Satan that say you won't die. That's what he said to Eve. Oh, you won't surely die. You're not going to die. It's the lies of Satan that say you won't die. You're good. Don't worry about it. You know, these people out here, they believe they're good. They're not going to go to hell. That comes from Satan. Satan's got it in their mind saying, oh, they're a good person. They don't have to worry about going to hell. That's what they actually believe. Oh, God's not going to send me to hell. You know, I'm a good person. I don't do anything bad. I bet they told lots of lies in their life. I know because I have. And I'm just like anybody else. Everybody's told lies. I've never met anybody that, that's never said, I've never told a lie. Everybody's told lies. It's Satan that says you don't need to get saved. You're a good person. There's the good word, and that's the word of God that says, for all have sinned and come short of glory of God. That's the truth. He tells us that because he wants to save us. It's Satan, the word of wickedness, the wicked word, that says, oh, you're good. You're a good person. You don't need to get saved. You don't need to read the Bible. You don't need to go to church. You know, one says you're bad. That's the good word. The other one says you're good. That's the wicked word. That's what we have. We had the good word, the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And then we had the wicked word. That's the word of Satan. It's lies. All the lies in the world that we have to put up each and every day. You can't believe anybody. You can't believe the doctor. Uh, you can't believe the mechanics. You can't believe Valvoline. You can't believe those new versions. That's 100% for sure. And let me tell you, the new King James Version is the most wicked version out there. They say it's the closest to the King James. That's because the beast was more subtle than any beast of the field. It's the same way with these new versions. They'll, they're going to have people splitting hell wide open. Because they say, oh, oh, you know, salvation is hard to get. You, you ain't good enough to get it. Are you, you're okay. You're a good person. God loves everybody. Don't worry about it. You know, don't worry. You don't even need to read it. That's the wicked word. The good word says, you know, get on your knees and ask God to save you. Get on your knees and ask God to save you, and he, he will save you. That's the good word of God, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let's have a word of prayer.